coming in his stead. And, and hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. And when the wicked perish, there is shouted. By the blessing of the right, right the city is exalted. But in the open is overthrown by the mount of the wicked. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of, of understanding holdeth his peace. Lord God, we come before you, Lord Jesus. We just want, Lord Jesus, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for your guidance, Lord God, and things that you show us, Lord God. And as you continue to bless these people who, who are here this morning, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, to have your way, Lord God, in this service. Have your way, Lord God, in our life, Lord. Let us give you all, all here this morning, Lord God, for you are already here, Lord God. We just want to inhabit you, Lord God. We just want to be a part of what you have going on in this place, Jesus. Touch our hearts and our minds here today, Lord God, and have your way in this service. As we get out the way, Lord God, and we just want to give you everything, Jesus, and let you take control. We thank you here this morning, Lord God, in your precious and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up your hands and just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We honor you this morning, God. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Probably a, a second or two couple seconds. I um, sent a text to my mother-in-law and asked if she had some headache medicine because I had a little headache just coming on. And then the song "Wait on the Lord" and was like, you know, I'm going to praise God. You know, sing a song. Amen. Then God just broke the headache. Amen. Amen. See, so sometimes we want to wait on the medicines to help us through certain things. Sometimes you want to wait on certain situations. To help us do certain things. But God just wants us to wait on him. And call on him to help us do the things that we're going through. With man. Whether it be something small. As a headache. Something big as cancer. To, all, to God it's all the same. Amen. But if we wait on God. And we trust in Jesus. All things. God takes care of all things. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, today is a fourth Sunday, so we'll be having um, at two o'clock this afternoon. Um, there'll be a service in Grace Harbor. That is the um, daughter work that we have um, in Quincy. For more information on how to get there with the addresses, if you, can, you want to see Brother Courtney or Sister Laura, Amen. Please be sure to pick up your 2021-2022. Um, Boston BUPC members list in the back from Sister Tellus after service. That's the prayer list. Amen? Amen. This prayer list has been going on for over 10 years and it's been a blessing. Amen? Amen. This, this lets you know that somebody is praying for you Amen. every week. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And that you are praying for somebody yeah. every week. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 The Brotherhood Fellowship out is this Saturday um, at 10 a.m. at the McGuff Mini Golf in Dedham. We will have lunch together and we don't need a head count by Wednesday. Amen. Amen. For um, to give that reservation, give that to, um, to Pastor Sam. We um, all who are interested in Bible quizzing, beginners up to eight, see Sister Tammy. And up to 11, see Sister Carissa for registration as soon as possible so they can start studying for the Word of God early this year. Amen? Amen. 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 Bible Quiz t-shirts are for sale, $15 each, in efforts to raise money for Bible Quiz and travels and tournaments. Um, and um, the t-shirt, somebody has a t-shirt on them? Well, the t-shirts will be out. It's a nice, beautiful blue t-shirt. Amen? Amen? And I believe they have all sizes, so if they don't have the size, let them know, put a request in and see if they can get you a size. Amen? Amen. District C and U Camp will be August 8th to August 13th. And it's going to be in a new facility. It's, it's awesome. It's nice. So for all who can go, please um, sign up online as soon as possible. For this year, you can't sign up at the location. You have to sign up ahead of time. Amen? So um, deadline is, I believe it is this week coming up, so be sure to go online and sign up for camp, amen? amen. BUPC Ladies Weekend is August 13th to August 15th, so all the ladies, 
see all the ladies leading for Sister Robinson, Sister Robinson, amen. For, for the UPC Ladies Weekend, amen. This Friday, the youth are going to Truth Tabernacle at the um, in Providence, Rhode Island, 52, 452 Potters Ave in Providence. This is going to be a um their um their youth week, Ignite Youth Week. So all who want to come out and support their youth week, that's this Friday, um at the Providence Church Troop Tabernacle. Um, and then Brother Pastor Sam has an announcement that he wants to make. Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. We are glad Pastor Bennett and Sister Bennett are back. Praise the Lord. Let's welcome them. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Pastor, we try to behave while you are away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I will tell you those who did not behave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we just uh, want to thank all the brothers that were able to make it to Springfield yesterday. Praise the Lord. Thank you so, so much. We had a wonderful time of work and fellowship. Praise the Lord. It was great. Thank you so much, brothers. The, the pastor greeted you, Pastor Bennett. Hallelujah. And he thanked you for having wonderful brothers that are strong in the Lord, not only in the spirit, but even physically. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And I just want to quickly emphasize our outing this Saturday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to encourage, we want to encourage all the brothers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You might not even be interested in golf. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The main point is fellowship. Praise the Lord. We need fellowship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be playing golf for the first time. But, uh, but I'll be teaching whoever doesn't know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we want to encourage all the brothers, all the brothers, please try your level best to be there. Hallelujah. It is right in Didam. Hallelujah. Be there by 10 a.m. Praise the Lord. We need that fellowship. Praise the Lord. For the golf and for the lunch. At least, at least 30 bucks. Praise the Lord. That's no, that's not a lot. Praise the Lord. At least, at least 30 dollars is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That will take care of the golf. That will take care of the lunch. Hallelujah. We are believing God for a great time. We need that fellowship. Praise the Lord. Brother Bola shall be, shall be telling us how to get into the military. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, there will be a lot to be shared. So we want to encourage every brother, please try your level best to be there. God bless you. Um, saints, please remember that the prayer room area is for family with kids. Please help with finding seats in the main sanctuary. We also want to welcome our first time guest, Emma. We want to welcome um, the Atkins and Murphy family. Welcome, welcome. We want to welcome Chelsea. I want to give you for God in prayer. As we all stand, we're going to go before God in prayer. As we all stand, we're going to take a bath, ties, and offer this morning. <laughs> amen, amen. It's always good to go before God in prayer, though, amen? Amen. So let's pray for our offering. Let's go before God in prayer for our offering. Um, remember to follow the directions of the ushers on um, giving your tithes and offering this morning. Lord God, we come before you. Just want to say thank you, Jesus, for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the strength, Lord God, to come into your house, Lord God, and give you praise, Lord God, and just give you all everything, Jesus. As we give our offering unto you, Lord God, we just want you, Lord God, to just take control of what we give unto you, Lord, and give it for your kingdom. Bless us this day in your precious and wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. As the singers sing, you bring forth your morning tides and offerings. <laughs>
Um, if you're used to, seem like you stop this year. I want you to stop that. I want you to do it. So if you're able to, I'm looking for some $200 offering. Do I have any? Somebody sign up says I'll get $200. Praise God. One, two, do I have three? Do I have four? Five? Glory. Six? Hallelujah. Any more? All right. I have an attitude response. I want you to come in more time. So um, if, 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 if you will, if you're able to, let's give an offering to Mars Memorial this morning. If you just step up and just put something in, in, in. God appreciates anything you give. And it will go to his kingdom. So let's all stand as we bring an offering and try to improve a little bit on our standing. <laughs> service God speak to you and you want to give a thousand dollars or whatever just bring it back to them him back amen, amen. amen. praise the Lord amen. maybe see you one more time now um, 2020 was quite a year a lot of things happened in 2020 and a lot of things didn't happen in 2020 that would have happened but one thing that, that, that happened in 2020 is that we started wearing masks. Anybody know what is that? <laughs> and so what happened is that a lot of times when people come to church, we had masks on, so we didn't even recognize each other. I remember one, one Sunday, we saw a lady come in and sat on back. She had a mask on. She had a hat on. And, I, and, and, and um, I hear some of the other ladies you know, saying, who's that lady with you? Who's that lady, who's that lady with you? And they didn't recognize who it is. Because she, had, she was on mask up. And, and she had a hat on. It was, it was, so her face was covered. And so a lot of us come in this, this past year with, with face covered. And so sometimes we didn't get introduced to one another. So I'm, I'm going to ask, if, if you have joined our congregation, whether have been baptized here or come from another, another church here in the last two years, will you stand with me? If, you, if you've joined our congregation in the last two years.
of how God is still adding to his church. Yeah. And, and, and God moves us from place to place to put us in the place that he wants us to put us in. And he's he making sure that the right people is in the right seat on the right bus. Okay. And now, see, see that, that's it. We haven't, we haven't been introduced. A lot of us haven't been introduced to one another. And so we want us, we want to get introduced this morning. I just feel the love and appreciation the moment I walk through these doors, so I thank you guys. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Sister Tappin, sister, and we have been coming here for a while, on and off. All of our children, and my children, and my son, and my grandkids, this is all my daughters. My little family in the middle right here and over here, so. Yeah, right. it's over. So, we are on here, and uh, it's a whole lot of fun. So when we come in, when Pastor Eugene pick us up, we have to use two vans. Two vans to pick us up. Okay, it was a whole lot of us. But you know, we are always here. We thank God. Sister Benny, she's always after my family. Yeah, she always after. She get one, right? It's coming. Um, Sister Benny, it's coming. Oh yes. <laughs> so I just want to give God the praise and the glory and then thank. Pastor Benny, that I'm here with him and his church as a family. I'm so thankful. And God give me the glory that I can work very good on Monday. <laughs> okay? Music 
My name is Shamila Isabel. This is my daughter, Shamari Williams. As she said, we live in North Attleboro. We, we drive like 40 minutes to get here, but I was determined to find a church that um, I feel comfortable and walk through those doors. I know this was home and it's been home church for about uh, three months now, so I give my thanks for bringing us here. All the way from Oregon, I drove 2,000 miles, but it here four days, but I found a good church and I'm thanking God. I bless you. Good morning, everyone. Oh, snap. <laughs> My name is Sunny. Um, I've been at this church for almost a year now. I'm Haitian, born and raised in Boston, and um, just want to thank God for His faithfulness through this year. So many ups and downs, and I'm grateful for all y'all welcoming me to this church and uh, being real with everything that's been produced in this mic and these messages. And shout out to my fiance Sarah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Christopher Andrade, and I'm a student here at Boston. I go to college here with my friend Sahil. And uh, it's, it was, when I speak for both of us, we're very happy to be here with all of you. It's been a big blessing. Uh, I'm trying to bring a lot of people to the world of the Lord. And this is what, this is what we're supposed to do, and I'm very glad that I'm the one to do it. Uh, I love you guys all very much. And, uh, Looking forward to coming here much more with more people as well. God bless you. Uh, hello, my name is Monero. Uh, I've been welcomed. In, I've been welcomed into this church about six months ago. Uh, one of my college classmates, Charmaine Kadas, over there. Uh, she brought me to this church. You know, uh, I came from a lot of a place that's not. You know the best place, and she brought me to the Lord, and I just want to say I'm extremely blessed for all the people, all the support, I want to give thanks to Pastor Bennett, Brother Donald, uh, Sam, uh, Brother Sam, everybody has just been so welcoming, and it's been a very hard transition, but I'm glad that I made it. One thing, one thing that I was... Uh, also very proud of is this is actually the first church that I got not the first church this is the church that I got baptized at my first baptism <laughs> once again I'm extremely thankful for all you guys all the love all the welcomes the support the, the continuous prayers you guys are doing a fantastic job and I hope to follow you guys lead and bring more people to this church <laughs> Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, um, my name is Steve. This is my family, Elias, my wife, Christine, Nathan, and Isabella, sleeping, and my wife's mother, <laughs> Miss Jean. Praise him. Um, I'm no stranger to Boston United Pentecostal. A lot of people might not know, but this is where Sister Celia and my uncle, Brother Easton, got married many years ago. I was a part of that wedding as well. I was tiny. Praise God. <laughs> I was very small. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But I'm happy to be a part of this church. Praise God. I've seen a lot of growth here. My children love it. You know, my wife is on the praise team. I play bass guitar sometimes. Praise God. And it's, it's a wonderful transition. And I, I can see myself here. Praise God for many years. Many years. Praise God. Good morning everyone, um, my name is um, Sahil, I'm from India and I got the opportunity to be in this beautiful community by my friend Christopher. Um, we first came here in 2019 and um, that's, what the, uh, that's the time when I realized there's, you don't need any place to worship God, you just need to say the words and remember Him by your heart. And, will do his actions. So thank you Christopher for introducing me to this beautiful community. Um, it's, 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 it's lovely to be here. Thank you so much.
and that's what Pastor Benny and Sister Benny, they are so loving to us. But we appreciate them so much. And we appreciate the virgin of the church. They are so unity and love. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I joined the church about seven, six months ago, December, how long ago that was. <laughs> um, I was a little bit about me, I guess I'm from Minnesota, um, so Midwest, came all the way to the East Coast. So, <laughs> uh, I was introduced, um, I was introduced by the Higgins family, if you have not known, my fiance is Andrew Higgins. My bad. <laughs> um, but since being here, it has been extremely a blessing. Um, this church showed me so much, um, and I'm still learning. You know? I had a lot to learn coming here, and I'm um, still in that process. And it's, every time I walk in here, it's a great atmosphere. You know, um, you walk into the church, everybody's running and dancing, and you can just feel the spirit moving. And it's great. But I'm not quite there yet. I'll be, I'll be there soon. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, my name. My name's Juan, by the way. You, know, <laughs> you can remember me by African American with Hispanic name. Juan. One, two, where's he at? Somewhere over there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, point of, I, I hope you get 20 names. You got 20 names. Oh. <laughs> so, so, make sure you, um, you let them know while they're in if you're welcome. Right? Make them a part of our community. Yes. Let them know that we are a family. Yes. And this is the best church in Boston. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for giving us your home church. Praise the Lord. Now today we have a big dedication. Psalms 22.10, reading from the New, New Living Translation, says, I was thrust into your arm at my birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. And today, these, these, these parents have come forward to dedicate themselves and their son to Jesus Christ. So I want to remind you that a baby dedication does not convey, convey any, any special religious or, or spiritual, let me put it this way. Dedicating your baby does not save you. But it tells us some things. It tells us that these young people, these children, they are precious to Jesus. He said, suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. 
Then he came and said, Lord, so let you know that when you put them in God's hand, we are not just dedicating a child, but ourselves to, to nurture children in God's way. We are to teach our children. We are to train them. God has given you this precious gift. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, can the parents come stand right up front? Right in the middle. I don't want you over to the side. Because I want to talk mainly to you. When you dedicate your child, you're saying, you're, this is a Christian dedication, you're saying, I want my child to grow up knowing Jesus, Amen. knowing the Lord. See, a lot of times we have a, a baby dedication and we never see that child again until probably their um, wedding or the funeral. But in, 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 um, a real dedication is not just an occasional, an occasional appearance. But it, it, you're, dead. you're saying, I want my child to grow up knowing the Lord. Amen. Is this your desire today? That you're, that you're, let me see if I can get his name. The main, is that right? That the main will grow up knowing God. See, there will come a time when the main ha has to make his own personal choice. But before then, you are the one who makes the choices for him. You are the one who teaches him. He, he will pattern what you show him. He will, he will be what you put in him. If he hears you arguing always, he's going to think that's normal. And he will always be arguing. If he, if he hears words of love, he will know it's okay to share words of love. What you put into him is what he will become. And so today, you're not just dedicating him, but you're dedicating yourself to train him so that he will grow up knowing the Lord. Amen. I want to encourage you today to not let this be a one-time occasion in church. I hear mom, come in, come, come. Um, she promised that you're going to be in church. She said, she said, my children are going to join me soon. <laughs> so, I'm encouraging you to make that sooner than later. Yes. For your child's sake. See, we live in a world where there is a serious need for the wisdom of God in rearing our children. There is a serious need for our children to know God and know that they can depend on Him. And so today as we dedicate the main, we also want to dedicate you to God. Now, there's going to they, they, um, I think one of our president's wives I kind of make the, 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 um, the phrase famous, it takes a village to raise a child. So I am happy to see that, not that you're not just standing by yourself, but that they are, you have a support system around you. Your support system, it's your responsibility also to live a life that the main can pattern. Let the words that come from your mouth be something that he'd be happy to say and be willing to say and it'll be good for him to say. Let the things you do show him the things that he needs to do. So today we're going to pray a prayer of dedication not only for the main and Priscilla and the main but we want to pray for the whole family as you Dedicate yourself to the Lord. I have here a scripture that we would like the man to learn. And the man can't read it. So we're going to ask mom and dad to rehearse this in the man's ear often. So by the time he learns to read, he can say this. He would not read it. But I want to learn to read too. It comes from Psalm 62, verse 5 through 8. I'm reading it in the common English version. It says, Oh, I must find rest in God only, because my hope comes from Him. 
Only my God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. All you people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart before him. God is our refuge. I want to make, to let the main make this his. Let him not just be something you read, but let him take ownership of it. By the time he's three, I want him to know that God is his, rest, his refuge. And he can rest in God because you've showed it to him. And, and you've read for him. And you've patterned it before him. Amen? Amen. Grandma, are we going to ask you to hold this for right now? I don't mind calling you Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you ask the main over to his mom, hold him for a second. I'm happy to give it back to dad. And he likes that. <laughs> I know dad, I'm going to ask you to give him to me. He might not like that that much. <laughs> And actually he does, he's, he's, he's smiling. <laughs> now I'm, I'm behind this desk and I'm away from you. And if I should drop him, you will be up here fast enough to catch him. I won't drop him. <laughs> See, that might shake your head, don't drop him. <laughs> but there are going to be times when you're going to be out of reach and we want God to take control of him we want God to be his protection we want God to be his refuge and you're going to pray for that and you're going to teach that to him and so he's going to pray for that in putting him in my hands you're saying I want God to protect my son when, I'm not, when I came in here I want God to be here for him even when I'm there, I want God to be there for him even more. Because God is our refuge and he's having fun. <laughs> Church, will you stand with us? I'm going to ask if um, some of the ministers can come around. And, and we're going to pray for this, for this family as we dedicate them to the Lord and dedicate the main to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Why don't you stretch your hands towards this family as we pray? We come before you, Lord, knowing that all things is in your hand. Knowing that you have all power. Knowing, Lord God, that you give wisdom. You said if we need wisdom, we should ask. So I'm praying, Lord God, for wisdom for this couple and for this family. We're praying, Lord God, that you will show them your way. Father, I pray, Lord God, that they will look to your word for direction. And that they will teach their son to walk in your way. I pray, Lord God, that they will walk in your way. Lord, we dedicate them to you today, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you will take this family in charge. We pray for the father and the mother, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for the extended family. We pray for your hand upon them. We pray, Lord God, for your arms around them, Lord Jesus. And, oh God, we bring the name before you right now, Lord, and we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will be his protection. That you will hold him in your hands, Lord. That you will keep him. Lord God, I pray for your protection on him, Lord Jesus, that when his parents are not there, Lord God, that you will lead him and guide him. I pray, Lord God, that they will speak of you often. So we know that he can call on you. I pray, Lord Jesus, for your hand on him. I pray, Lord, for your anointing and your blessing to be upon this family as we dedicate them to you. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, Lord, for their willingness to come before you and to present your son. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll honor their desire as you draw them to you. In Jesus' name.
Hello everyone. This is my first born, you know, Damien Brown. Damien Omar Brown, Junior, JR. A little bit nervous though, because, you know, never been this, never do, did this before. So, first time. I'm so thankful and blessed to be here among lovely people like you are. You get what I'm saying? And hopefully God will lead me here even more often. Yeah, I appreciate the kindness. I appreciate the good energy, the vibe that the church brings. You understand me? I feel it deeply. Thanks to my wife, mother. You know, she's the one that, you know, made this possible. You get what I'm saying? I'm thankful for my wife. Thankful for my baby. So baby, Dami, I love you forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Time is far spent. I'll try to be brief. We're reading from Psalm, from James chapter 8 and verse chapter 4 and verse 8. And the scripture says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Second part says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you doubtful mind. But I want to draw my um, draw your attention to the first part. It says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We praise the Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord God, our hearts be open before you today. Let your words draw us, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. You will be seated. Oh, I'm... Have you ever, um, some, someone's holding a baby and um, you approach and the baby just reaches out his hands for you? Oh, yeah. And when that baby reaches, reaches out his hands, you just want to take it. Even if there's no money to take it, you just want to take it. I remember when, um, not too long ago, um, whenever Aiden's, my grandson Aiden would see me, no matter who has him, he would reach out to me. His hands would be reach out to me, and, and and no matter what I was doing, I just felt compelled to reach back out and take him. And in, in the Bible, there are those who I will call reachers, who, in reaching out to Jesus, were reached by Jesus. See, when we when we reach out to him, he he just feels compelled. To reach back out to us. And, and, and that's why James tells us, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. There was a, a story in the Bible about a, a woman who had an, an issue of blood. And the Bible says that she, um, she sought help all over. She went everywhere trying to get healed. See, the, see the, there, are, there are sick people who needs to reach out to Jesus. And this woman, recognizing her sickness and had tried everything and, and could not get healed, she said, I'm, you know, I need to reach Jesus. I'm going to reach out to Jesus. And so she came looking for Jesus. When she got to him, he was unreachable, it seems like. Have you ever get to a place where you felt like Jesus was unreachable? And, and, and he seemed like, I'm trying to reach, but, but he, he's not accessible to me. But she was determined, I am going to reach Jesus. I need something from him, I'm going to reach him. The Bible records that she said, if I can but just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just reach his garment, I'm going to be made whole. And so she, she got down, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming she got down on, on her hands and knees. 
Cause, cause the hem and the garment back then were way down. It's not like some hems that I've seen, you know, nowadays. Those hems were, were brushing the floor. They weren't clean hems. They were dirty hems. They were dragging on the floor, dragging on the dirt. And back then, you know, the, mo the, the most common mo mode of transportation was, was horses and donkeys and, you know, what they leave behind as they travel. That's where the hem of, of Jesus' garment was. But she determined, I've got to reach to Jesus. I'm reaching out, and we've got to get to the place where we want to reach out to Jesus, no matter, no matter the obstacles. There were people between her and Jesus. There was unsanitary con 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 conditions around, it seems like, but she said, I'm going to reach Jesus. And, and, and she, she reaches out, and here is a, a sick woman who reached out in faith to touch Jesus' garment. Believing that if she can reach out to him, he would heal her. She was expecting a return reach. She was just reaching out to Jesus. And when she touched his garment, not only was she, was she healed, but Jesus reached out to her. She received more than a healing. She, re she received a word of assurance from Jesus himself. He said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace. You see, when we reach out to Jesus, we can be assured that Jesus is going to reach back out to us. He's reaching for you right now. And all we've got to do is reach out to him. There is a respond, a respond and reach when we reach out to Jesus. He's going to meet us. Halfway. He won't even let you reach all the way. Uh, oftentimes he will meet you halfway. See, the seekers can also reach out to Jesus. There was a man in, in Luke chapter 19 who was seeking Jesus. He wanted to just to see Jesus. But he was reaching out, and then and then the Bible said that he came in behind the press and and, and, and um when he came, he couldn't get to Jesus. You see, just like, just like with, the, with the woman with the issue of blood, there was always going to be people trying to stop you from reaching Jesus. But if you will reach beyond what people say, if you will reach beyond what people think, if you will reach beyond what people do, you can reach Jesus. And when you reach Jesus, he can be reaching back to get a hold of you. Zacchaeus came to reach Jesus. And, and he could not, the Bible says, for the press. And, and every, time I, every time I read it, I smile. Because, you know, I grew up in Jamaica back in the, in, in the 60s, 70s. And, and, and the only word, the only press, the only press I knew of that we talked about was the foreign press. And so for, for, for years, I thought I knew press as it was foreign press. I didn't know that it was people. <laughs> so every time I read that, I smile. But um, Zacchaeus found himself behind the press, behind people. And people will prevent you from getting your blessing. People will stop you from reaching where you need to be. But we have got to remember to continue, no matter what, to reach out to Jesus. Yes. And the seeker, the Zacchaeus, he wanted, all he wanted to do was to see Jesus. And he did his best to reach Jesus. But when he couldn't, he said, I just want to see him. He said, if I, if I can't really touch him, but I want to see him. And the Bible says that he went ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree. See, we have got to be willing to get beyond the obstacles. To, 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 uh, to get to Jesus, there will always be obstacles. There's always going to be somebody saying, try again tomorrow. There's always going to be somebody said, saying, you don't have to do it today. There's somebody going to tell you you've got time. There's somebody going to tell you you're not worthy. There's somebody going to tell you you are too short. But he said, I've got to see Jesus. I can't see about the crowd. I'm too dignified. Maybe he, I don't think he was saying that. Too dignified to crawl on the ground, but he said, I'm going to see Jesus. 
You climb up into a tree. And Jesus came by. Jesus came by. Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus, who he was. And he was rewarded because when Jesus, when he reached out to Jesus, Jesus reached back out to him. Jesus came under that tree, looked up, and addressed him by name. I want to know that Jesus knows who you are. He knows you by name. And he's, he, he's calling your name. See, a lot of times we're just not hearing. We're not paying attention. But when we reach out to Jesus, he's reaching out to us and he's personal. He's a personal God. He, 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 he's, a, he's one that, can, that, that is touched by our, our infirmity. He knows our need. And he, he doesn't matter who you are. He's a personal God. And when you reach out to him, he's going to be personal to you. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. I'm going to eat at your house. And believe me, that back in those days, that was that, that was spectacular. That was that was an, that, that was something meaningful. Right. I'm gonna go and eat at your house. Right. And if you read if you read further the story, you'll find out all the all the the, the, the flag that Jesus got right. because he went and ate at a, at a publican's house. But Jesus is a personal God, and he want to have personal communion with you and when we reach out to him he's going to reach back out to us and he will he will reach the sick when the sick reach out to him he will reach the seekers when the seekers reach out to him because he wants to have some personal time with you he wants to have some personal time with each and every one of us God is going gonna, is gonna to reach you if you will reach out to him he'll reach out to the shouters Bible talks about a man named Bartimaeus. He was blind. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. See, sometimes we just need to lift our voice and cry out. Let our voice reach Jesus. He cried out. And they said, hey, be quiet. You're making too much noise. You, you, you don't want to disturb the master. But the Bible says that he cried out the more. He makes it louder. He makes it more. He cried more often. He shout more. People will try to shut you down. But we've got to let our voice reach Jesus. It is, there's nothing wrong with whispering. There's nothing wrong with whispering. And, and, and Jesus will, if you whisper a prayer, Jesus will hear it. But you know, when it comes to praising and, and crying out to Jesus, I don't want to be quiet. I don't want to be silent. I'm not ashamed of my praise. I'm not ashamed of crying out to Jesus. I want my voice heard. I want Jesus to know that I'm crying out to him. And I want other people to know that I'm crying out to Jesus. He cried out the more. They said, quiet, hold it down. And he cried out the more. And we have got to get to the place where we let our voice be heard. You see, the world is not afraid of letting their voice be heard. And let their, their, their issues come out. They're always talking. There's always sounds coming at you. You know, everywhere you go, there's ads. I downloaded a, 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 a calculator on my, on my iPhone. And every time I'm going to use it, there's voices I got to get through before I can get to it. There's ads come popping up. And the world is, is crying out to you. They want to get your attention. But we need to get the attention of our God. It's not that he is deaf. But we need to become passionate in our cry to God. We need to, we need to cry out with a loud voice. They're going to tell you, hey, you need to be quiet. You should be making all that fuss. You see, the world is going to tell you that when you cry out to Jesus. But they're not, they're not going to stop their crying out. They're, 
you're not going to stop me. They're, they're selling their themselves and their, their ideologies and their lifestyle. But the Bible tells us not to be conformed. But we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Don't let the word squeeze you into the mold. We need to let our voice be heard as we cry out to our God. He will answer. Blind Bartimaeus shouted until Jesus heard him and granted him an interview. The end result was that Bartimaeus received his sight. He received something to shout about. See, when we reach out to Jesus, he's going to reach back out to us. And he's going to give us what we need, what we desire, and more. Shout out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. Jesus is reaching out. If the sincere will reach out to him, then he will reach back out to the sincere. There was a story in the scriptures about a woman who had a daughter. That was the Bible said she was vexed with the evil spirit. She came to Jesus. She came to Jesus' disciples and says, hey, I want, to, I want my daughter healed. And um, she followed them. She followed them asking for healing. They turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, will you tell this woman to just leave us alone? Jesus turned to the woman and says, look, I am come for the people of Israel. That's, that's what I'm here for. And it's not neat that I should give the children bread to the dogs. Man, if I hear that, I'm trying to reach somebody and, 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 and I hear that. I'm out of here. He called her a dog. But she sincerely needed help. And when the, the sincere continue to reach out to Jesus, nothing is going to stop. Name calling and stopping them. Trials ain't stopping them. Nothing is going to stop them. She said, but, but Lord, I, 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 I agree I'm a dog. I'm not, I'm not worthy. But I'm still reaching out to you. I still have a need. She said, even dogs have needs. The unworthy have needs. The outcast have needs. I recognize I'm an outcast. I recognize I'm a dog. I recognize I'm not worthy. But I still got needs. And I know that you are the meter of needs. You are the one that need needs. You are the one that can help me. I'm still going to reach out to you when we sincerely have a need. We need to know that we, need, we can reach out to the one who will meet our needs. It doesn't matter what we have to go through to get to Jesus. It doesn't matter whether the press is there or not. But we have got to get to Jesus. Yes. The, 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 the Syrophonian woman would not take a no for an answer. She saw Jesus to heal her daughter. I've got a need. Do we, do we have needs today that we need God to meet? Are we turned off by the fact that somebody seems to offend us? We, 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 we have become so thin-skinned that the least thing offend us and we go away in a pout. Jesus looked at her and said, you're a dog. And she said, I'm a dog but I still got needs. I still need you. And we need to get that kind of an attitude. You, you, you come to church and because somebody didn't, they didn't shake your hands, you go away and say, I'm not going back. I, 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 I don't want to be involved with that because somebody didn't call you. We, 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 we want so much to be, to be poured out upon us that we get offended by the least things. But we need to reach out to Jesus. And if Jesus said, don't come, I'm still coming. Because he's got my need. He's got the answer. And we need to get that, that kind of desire. I've got to get to Jesus no matter what. I've got to get to Jesus. 
I don't matter who it is, matter who's in the way, I've got to get to Jesus. If I've got to get down on my knees and crawl, I've got to get to Jesus. I'm reaching out to him because I know if I get to him, he's going to reach back out to me. If I've got to run ahead and climb up, I'm going to climb up because I've got to get to Jesus. He's got the answer. I've got to get to Jesus. If I'm sick, Jesus is the answer. If I'm down, Jesus is pick me up. If I'm in prison, he is the deliverance. And I've got to get to Jesus. And we have got to reach out to Jesus. Because it's just in his nature. And if we reach out to him, he can't help himself. He's going to reach back out to us. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing something. But when, but when Aiden reaches out his reach hand, I left what I'm doing just to get a hold of him. Lately, whenever I pass by Joshua, he reaches out to me and I can't help myself. If he's reaching out, I'm reaching back. See, that's what Jesus is doing. If we will reach out to him, he can't help himself. He's just got to reach back out to us. He's just got to get a hold of us. He wants to hold you in his arms. He wants to make you his. He wants to be your comfort. He wants to be your healing. He is the answer and he wants you to know that he is the answer. He's reaching out to you today. We've just got to reach out to him. If you came in here in the house this morning sick with an illness, I want to know that our God is here and all you've got to do is reach out to him and he'll reach back out to you and he'll bring a healing. If you came in down, he will pick you back up. If, he, if you are sad, he'll, he'll put joy in your heart. He's reaching out to you. Jesus is reaching out to you today. And I won't take any more of your time. So let's all stand. And I want to encourage you to reach out to Jesus right now. Reach out to Jesus and he'll reach back out to you. He, he wants to grant the desires of your heart. All you've got is reach out to him. As, you, as, as, as he's passing, reach out. If he stopped, reach out. Whatever the need is, just reach out to Jesus. He wants to meet the need of riches. Let's reach out to Jesus. He is the answer. He is our healing. He is our deliverance. He is our provision. And you don't have to leave this house today with the burdens you brought in. The woman with issue of blood came in burdened down with her illness. When she reached out to Jesus, her faith, Jesus said, made you whole. He said, be at peace. Zacchaeus laid down with guilt and he had gotten gain. When he reached out to Jesus, he was able to let go of his burden. He said, I'm going to give back half of what I own. And I'm going to re repay everybody that I've stolen from. And he let his guilt bear because he reached out to Jesus and Jesus reached back out to him. If you're here today, whatever your need, whatever your, your situation or your position, I, I ask you to reach out to Jesus because Jesus is reaching out for those who reach out to him. I want to open an altar and invite you to come reach Jesus. Come on, come on, reach out to Jesus. If you've got a sickness, if you're in need of healing, reach out to the healer and he will heal you. If you're bringing, carrying around a burden of guilt and shame, reach out to Jesus and he will relieve you of it. Because he's reaching out back to you. Why, why don't we go ahead and reach out to Jesus right now? Let's reach out to the Lord right now. He wants to meet you. 
to reach out and he will reach back to you. He will take a hold of your hands. He will walk with you. Whatever the need, whatever the situation, God is able to fix it. Just reach out to Jesus. He's right here reaching out to you. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's spiritual, it's mental, it's physical. Just reach out to Jesus. Let him know what your need is. He's here with forgiveness. He's here to meet you in your need when you reach out to Jesus right now. Reach out to Jesus. Bring your burden to Him. He's reaching out to you. Once you make the steps, He will meet you halfway. He won't even let you come all the way. He will meet you in your need. He will bring your deliverance. Cry out to Him. Cry out to Him. Cry out to Him right now. Let your voice be heard as you cry out to Jesus. Jesus, God of David, have mercy on me. Let Him hear. Don't be silenced by those around you. Don't be silenced by the press. Don't be silenced by the crowd. But lift your voice and cry out to Jesus.
Praise God. Our praise God. Our, our afternoon service will be indoor. I understand it's it's gonna rain this afternoon, so we're gonna leave that here at five o'clock this evening for for service. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your hand upon us. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus. We give you our Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for reaching out for us, Lord. Oh, God, we're running to you, Lord. We're praying, God, for your strength, for your anointing. Heavenly Father, we pray you meet everyone here this afternoon in their need, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for your hand upon us, Lord. Dismiss us, Lord God, from this house of worship, Lord. But keep us in your presence always, Lord Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we reach out for you, Lord God, help us to feel your comfort and presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If you're worshiping, we encourage you to continue worshiping, to continue praying, to get what you need from the Lord. Otherwise, we'll be dismissed in Jesus' name. Yeah,